Sea Sharks, it's Miss Amanda from the library. Happy Science Month! This week we're learning about earth science and today we're going to learn about fossils in If You Are a Hunter of Fossils. If you are a hunter of fossils. Written by Bird Baylor and Peter Parnell. Maybe you are a hunter of fossils. Maybe you are the one who turns the dark earth of a flat Kansas wheat field and touches a fish in a stone. Maybe you are the one climbing rocky gray ledges in Utah to look for a trilobite 500 million years old. Maybe you are the one in Wyoming with your feet in a dinosaur track, or the one who finds a seed fern in Pennsylvania shale so perfect every vein still shows. Maybe you are the one in the hills of Nebraska with a rhinoceros bone in your hand, or the one who gathers sponge in the rocks of an Iowa farm. Maybe you are a hunter of fossils like me. I am the one on the side of a West Texas mountain, reading the rocks, looking for signs of the sea that was here. Today you'd find me resting in a chalky limestone border by a prickly pear. There are seashells in this rock, jumbled, jammed together, large and small. I always stop and touch the ones that curl like a little ram's horn. Exogria is their name. And then I sit here in the sun, resting from the long, steep climb. I see the rangeland down below, the clumps of cactus and the tall, pale yuccas and the dry grass bending in the wind. I see the salt flats and the dust devils blowing and the dirt road going to a windmill and one blue pickup truck moving slowly down that road. But that seems far away and not quite real. Up here, what's real is the shallow, warm, Cretaceous sea that all these seashells know. On this mountain, every rock still holds the memory of that time. When you are here, you hold it too. The ocean salt is in your blood. It's lime in your bones. Its waves rise slow and green around you and the feel and pull of the tides. And it never seems to be now. Here, time flows back and forth so easily that any day can be wrapped up inside some other day that came and went a hundred million years ago. Here, when I find a brachiopod or mollusk or a round sea urchin, I don't just see it as it is on a mountain locked in a rock. I see it in the ancient leaping water. I see the tiny clams plowing through mud. I see sea lilies sway. I see all the creatures with shells and plates and spines, slow moving, glimmering, they hide in the crevices, creep into holes in the rocks. I see the waving tentacles and curving spiral shells of anemones. It is their day. They are the masters of the sunken sea floor world. Above them, fish swim lazily by coral reefs. Sharks move through darkness. It is an age of reptiles in the sea of giant turtles and great serpents, sharp toothed monsters, swimming lizards 40 feet long. And in the air above the waves, a reptile named Pteranodon flaps its long gray bat-like wings and dives for food. No animal so large has ever flown before that time or since, but on this mountain, any little wind brings back the sound of those fog gray wings still flapping. Up here, you never are surprised by the things like that. Sometimes you even feel the long, slow terror in that world when water turned to mud. It took millions of years for ocean slime and sun to fight it out, but finally sunshine won. Now that sea is a mountain of rock that I climb with a shell in my hand. If you are a hunter of fossils, you know how the day always ends. You know how it is to go home feeling glad that you walk in the sun, breathing air. You always walk home kind of proud. You always hold on to the long chain of life as you go.